Hi, this is Peter Taiti and Manos Brilakis from the Minneapolis Heart Institute and the Cardiovascular Innovations Foundation. And this is case 41 for the Manual of Non-CTO Coronary Interventions. This is a case of a complex intervention in a very obese patient. The patient was a 71-year-old diabetic man. He presented with non-ST elevation myocardial infarction and his weight was 550 pounds, which is actually at the limit of most uh, contemporary cath tables. His ejection fraction was 45% and he presented in heart failure. Diagnostic angiography was performed using radial access. Engagement was challenging as is visualization. There is a CTO of the proximal right coronary artery. And there are also severe lesions on the left system. There is almost a uh, Timmy 2 flow into the LAD, whereas there is good flow into a circumflex branch, there is significant left main disease. So this patient has essentially a last remaining vessel with severe disease in the main as well as the circumflex as well as the LAD. The patient was seen by cardiac surgery, however he was turned out for coronary bypass graft surgery and he was referred for high risk PCI. Which brings several questions. Number one, regarding access. Femoral access was uh, almost impossible this patient due to extreme fat folds protruding into the legs. We considered consulting vascular for surgical cut down to get to the artery. However, we decided to do the intervention using radial access since we had done that for the diagnostic angiogram. The second question was about hemodynamic support. And given this patient's borderline hemodynamics with congestive heart failure, low ejection fraction, and uh, the PCI on essentially the last remaining vessel with an occluded right and severe disease on the left, the decision was to do hemodynamic support. Given the obesity, the plan was to perform impella through the axillary artery doing surgical cut down. And this is how it looks like. It was uh, an extremely challenging procedure, just getting down to the artery. It was a very deep, you can uh, appreciate that there was extremely deep uh, um, origin of the subclavian artery, but eventually we were able to get access to the vessel and an impeller device was placed. A wire was um, inserted into the left ventricle. The impeller C was uh, inserted. And after doing that, uh, the patient um, uh, did have um, fairly okay hemodynamics. The pump flow was 3 liters per minute. As you can see, we did have a continuous right heart cath during the procedure, which is uh, very useful in this patient. His filling pressure was close to 30, despite being optimized for several days prior to that. And having the PA pressure continuously monitored can give us the heads up if things really go bad. However, the options here were difficult in terms of escalating support to approaches such as ECMO. Moving on to the PCI part. Engaging the left main was extremely challenging. We tried an XB 3.5 through a seven slender sheath, but we could not engage. We could also not engage with an XB 4.5. And finally, we were able to engage with the Six Friends CLS 4.0 guide and perform diagnostic angiography, which now makes us appreciate a little bit better the anatomy, which is indeed extremely complex. The patient has a severe disease in the ostium of the left anterior descending artery, which is a fairly large vessel. There is also a large circumflex with some disease in the proximal portion. We were able to advance uh, a wire into the LAD with difficulty and then we attempted to place a wire in the circumflex. However, despite using a twin pass microcatheter and several guide wires, including the Sion, Field FC and Samurai, we could not get into the circumflex because of tortuosity. We also tried to use a Supercross 120, which is a preformed microcatheter. But once again, we were unable to get into the circumflex. You can appreciate here that there is an extreme angle, which is right at the site of a severe lesion. And that made uh, engagement and uh, wiring of the vessel extremely challenging. During this process, one of the complications that can happen, and actually did happen, there was some evidence of dissection in that left main. 
and we didn't want to take any chances so we immediately placed a stand all the way from the left main into the LED and uh, this uh, fortunately stabilized the patient but also despite doing that we still had flow into the circumflex our concern was that we would have plug shift and occlude the circumflex but we felt we didn't really have much choice once again after we place the stand into the left main and one of the key factors here is that we did not actually cover all the way back to the aorta there's still some lesion remaining but nevertheless the lesion was stabilized we tried once again with a twin pass microcatheter to wire back into the circumflex but because of the extreme angulation we were once again unable to do so that was despite a lot of effort and a large amount of contrast Eventually, we decided to just focus on the LAD. We performed a balloon angioplasty in the middle LAD, deployed a, a drag eluting stent. Fortunately, there was no compromise in the flow in a fairly good size first diagonal. And then we finished the case by placing a stent to cover the left main all the way into the aorta, which was actually challenging. We had to use an 8 millimeter stent. We did not want to extend it over the ostium of the circumflex to avoid double jailing that vessel, which could result in compromise in flow. So we had to end the distal end of the stent proximal to the takeoff of the circumflex and the proximal part protrude into the aorta. This was deployed. And then we used the osteal flash balloon to flare the ostium and facilitate potential future need for engaging the coronary artery. This is a final intravascular ultrasound. One way I like to these are this is go from the beginning and this is the aorta and now we're working into the left main and the first thing to notice is that actually our stand indeed does protrude into the aorta. This is very important when osteal stands are done and that confirms that we've covered the ostium and therefore minimize the risk of restenosis at the ostium of the vessel. The chroma flow which is Doppler flow it's very useful to clarify this. It shows clearly here that we have the stand sticking out in the aorta. There is flow on both sides of the stand that goes all the way out. So this is very reassuring. And then, of course, the next step is to ensure that we have adequate stand expansion and stand strata position, mainly stand expansion. And indeed, there is fairly good stand expansion uh, throughout uh, the placement of the stand. Also, using intravascular ultrasound could potentially help us minimize the amount of contrast. Despite of that, we did use uh, close to 360 ml of contrast, 74 mils of fluoro, 6.1 gray. Let's not forget this is a 550 pound patient, but eventually a nice result was achieved. We have a nice result in the left main with good flow back into the aorta. There is good flow into the LAD that provides collateral to the totally occluded RCA. And fortunately, there is still some flow. It's not perfect, but there is still some flow into the diseased circumflex branch. The patient eventually was dismissed to a nursing facility. His ejection fraction slightly improved and his clinical condition overall improved. Several lessons from this case and that, re that reflects patients who are extremely obese. The first is that visualization is going to be challenging. It's hard to penetrate through this amount of tissue, which makes important to use less uh, steep angulations. So AP projection or minimal angles are important to get the best possible picture. Although it's it is also important to make sure we use the um, low radiation settings and minimize fluoroscopy as much as possible, for example, by using intravascular ultrasound. The second, is access to the arteries of those patients can be extremely challenging. In this patient, we did not believe we could get femoral access, so we ended up using radial access, which worked out, but it was challenging still to engage um, the vessel. Getting access for hemodynamic support was done through axillary cut down, and this was where surgical was safer. It was about uh, seven to uh, eight centimeters deep getting to the artery. So definitely surgical exposure and repair was the safer way to do this versus doing a percutaneous uh, axillary stick. 
Second, when it comes to wiring through tortuosity, we had significant difficulty here. The patient had this um, severe angulation in the origin of the circumflex, which was right at an area of lesion. And despite using several tips and tricks for angulated lesions, which is the Supercross 120, the twin pass microcatheter, various guide wires, including soft guide wires, as well as polymer jacketed non-tapered guide wires like the Fielder FC. Despite doing all that, we were not able to wire through the circumflex. Also in the process, we did have a dissection from the guide wire requiring placement of a stand. When it comes to osteal lesions, we were able to stand all the way back to the aorta and then confirm osteal coverage with intravascular ultrasound, which is critical for osteal lesions. And finally, in cases like this, sometimes uh, perfect can be the enemy of the good. Had we persisted more on trying to open the circoflex, we might have given much more contrast or potentially caused more complications. The patient, at least in the short term, seemed to, be, to get benefit by recanalizing the LAD. Thank you very much.